Kyle Busch wins in the second start for RCR and um, <clears throat> his 19th straight season with a victory, which is now a new record. Um, and there were, uh, it was a fascinating race, man. Like you said, it was fun to watch. Kyle had an amazing race car. Reddick won stage one and two in that car last year. Kyle talked about how you know good they ran there in the past, and it just seemed like it got even better. And as the race went on, his car got faster and faster, and he became the class of the field in the final stage. Um, I uh, I I was uh, pretty pretty surprised. My I had friends texting me going, "Man, I'm I'm having all these conflicting emotions. Uh, <laughs> I don't I never liked Kyle. I don't want to pull for Kyle, but now he's driving a Chevy, and I'm, I like RCR and uh." Duh, duh. And they were all like having these uh, interesting uh, emotions about Kyle going to, you know, going on and winning this race. Ultimately, I think in general, everybody's pretty happy about it. You know, there's not, I don't hear anybody going, damn, I hated that. I wish that wouldn't happen. Right. Nobody's acting that way. Am I right? I, I haven't heard it. I'm yeah. assuming they're out there. 9% of the people uh, on Jeff Gluck's poll said that that was a bad race. I don't know who those 9% are, but they've fallen off their rockers. So, like, I, like <laughs> there's, there's always, people out there yeah. that are going to say it. I don't know who they are, though. Yeah. But, um, and I'll say this too, man. Uh, the, the number font that they, so they had that old block eight, and that new eight on that car is, I like it. I like the new number font. I just, you know, I'm a, D, I'm a, paint scheme guy oh so. no that's hilarious that that's the thing that jumps out i mean like to be honest with you um i would expect nothing less you're going to notice the changes of a yeah. font of a number and his, i didn't and his number's rather big in comparison to what you know nascar made this sort of template you couldn't get you couldn't come outside of this box mm -hmm. and um the numbers were kind of tiny and and weird and now there there's more freedoms i guess that they're giving the teams to do whatever they want except for being able to put the number wherever they want but they're um their numbers are kind of big, which I kind of think slapped on the side of that car. It just looked really good this weekend. Uh, so I don't know. I I um I had some sort of mixed feelings about it. You know, I don't know what I don't really know how I felt about it. But I was happy for Richard. Uh, and I think Kyle is. Uh, you know, there's, there's some conversations about. Well, Kyle's one of the greatest drivers to ever do it. We heard it from Kyle Larson from Chase Elliott after the race. They're like, why is everybody surprised about this? Why is this such a big deal? He's great. He's good. And I think that's all true. I agree with that. Um, I think he's – there's there's probably eight, roughly, drivers that you could put in the argument of the five best to ever do it. Kyle's one of those eight. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to have a different Mount Rushmore, right? Um, Kyle is definitely – Definitely in the conversations as one of the most raw, talented race car drivers that's ever came into the. I mean, he's only thirty-seven. I mean, he, think about how many years he's still thirty-seven has left. to forty-three is probably every driver's peak. Yeah, uh, moment in 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 terms of when where 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 you know risk taking and 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 experience and savviness and patience, all those things sort of cross at at a point. In a, in a person's life, and in NASCAR and in stock car drivers, it seems to be that 35 or 37 to 43 year, you know, that he's really coming into what I could, what could be his best years as a driver. Now, whether, you know, what, what that means in terms of like true victories and, and success on the racetrack remains to be seen. This car was fast at this racetrack last year. It looked a little better with Kyle driving it this year. Um, I wanted to talk about that team for a minute. Um, there's only one crew member, the over, the only only one over the wall guys that remains from last year. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So, so it's the, a whole new team. Yeah, the Jack Man. I want to get this right. Josh Sebecki. Uh, he is the only person, the over the wall crew that's that's there from last year. There's a lot of guys on that team that are from different teams. Uh, the front tire carrier. Brian Backus is from the 23 last year. Uh, Lamar Neal from the 42 is a tire carrier last year. So different people from, from different teams uh, making up uh, his crew this year. But everybody that's on the pit box, everybody that's part of the, the road crew is still the same from that team last year. And one person in, in particular is uh, fascinating to me. Um, former late model driver. He's a winning driver. 
uh, is the car chief on this car. His name's Clay Alexander, and the last name should mean something to everybody. Um, that is Mike Alexander's son. Mike Alexander was a prolific short track racer, uh, Nashville Fairgrounds. He actually got into uh, Xfinity, got all the way to the Cup Series, was sort of the one to take over uh, when Bobby Allison was injured in the Miller car. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike Alexander was kind of that guy that was that was that was chosen to to maybe be the next, um, you know, the fill in, you know, follow Bobby's, you know, shoes in that car and take over and take that car back to Victory Lane. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. Crashes and injuries and so forth um, derailed Mike's career. But he was a prolific short track racer. Uh, and, and somebody we should consider having on this show at some point. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I had no idea that Clay was his son, and, and that I have so much respect now, more respect for Clay. <laughs> so you were cheering. The in pedigree, this. right? Yeah. It, it, you know, the, and also, another thing I wanted to say is um, his crew chief, uh, Randall Burnett. I was so surprised that he didn't go with Reddick when Reddick went uh, to 2311. He stays, he gets Kyle Bush, and whether he knew that was happening beforehand or early in the process, I don't know, but that guy is a rock star. And um, the car that he put under Kyle this weekend uh, is was incredible. He's giving him a piece every week. Yeah. I mean, every week they, they are just up there in the front. Yeah. It's, an, it's pretty impressive to see. Uh, I think that, um, you know, we're going to hear a lot. We're going to hear that name a lot. Uh, this year, we heard it a lot last year. They won three races last year. They were a fast car. Uh, but I believe that, like I, like we said, with Kyle's age and where he is in his career, these the stars are aligning uh, for them to um, be one of the contenders throughout throughout the season. I wasn't sure what to expect. I told Kyle, uh, he he asked me what what I thought about going – RCR and I was apprehensive. I was like, you know, I didn't know what Randall, I, I didn't think Randall was going to be there. And I'm thinking, man, you know, what kind of car are you going to have? Who's your crew chief going to be? Where's the company in terms of, is it, is it, is it trending upwards? Is it trending downwards? There's just no, mm. no right answer here. And uh, I was apprehensive, man, but he chose to go there and He's got one of the best crew chiefs in the garage. At least that's the perception right now. Got a great team around him. And Denny said on his podcast that the that the RCR motors are the best out there right now. Yeah. I mean, like their motor program right now is just hitting. It's hitting. Yeah. There's something else, though, Denny said. I want, I want to get Chevys. your opinion. And, and the, the, all the Chevys. The right. Chevrolets are Chevys good. Chevys are doing good everywhere. That's right. There's something I want your opinion on sure. here. It's kind of related to this. Denny asked a question. He goes, I wonder where AD's head is in all this, AD being Austin Dillon. Yeah. Uh, you know, RCR's last four wins have all been by Austin's teammate. Now, as it's been well reported, Austin made the phone call to Kyle to try to get him yep. and recruit him over there. Uh, Jared Allen uh, on Denny's show asked the question, do drivers really want their teammates to succeed? Um, <laughs> I know what I think on that. What do you think on that? You've been in the situation of having to be Jimmy Johnson's teammate when he was clicking off yeah. everything. What is Austin Dillon right now thinking? And 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 does is he? We're all gonna. We all know they're gonna say the right thing. Yeah. We're all gonna wear a smile. But as Denny said on Actions Detrimental, that smile will wear off after a while. I think that Austin is fine with Kyle going out there and outrunning him. I think that Austin. You know, as long as Austin's not mired back in the top, you know, the backside of the, you know, the twenties. If he rallied and finished in the top ten, he was up toward the front at the end of the Daytona race at points. And so, I mean, as long as he is running relatively well, I think that that will um, that will satisfy him. I think that he knew when he called Kyle Busch and brought Kyle in that Kyle was going to show him up. I think he knew that. He had to. He was calling right? a world-class talent. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that Austin, I don't, you know, Austin's young. How long does he want to race? That's up to him. But I think that Austin knows that if he's ever going to be in position to run that company someday, he's he's got to make sure that company survives. He's got to make sure that he has talent in there. He can't bring in, if he's a B guy or a C driver, he can't bring in D and F drivers 
to run behind him intentionally and expect that company to be there for him 15, 20 years from now. Yeah. So if if he's smart, he brought in Kyle Busch so that Kyle can win races, elevate this brand, and keep pushing this company forward so it can survive another 20 years. And that when it's his turn to take over the helm, which could be sooner than later, uh, that that it's it's a healthy team people want to come work for and drivers want to come drive for. And so this was a really unique c- scenario where you had Reddick wanting to leave, mm-hmm. thinking that the pasture was greener where he was going, and, a, and one of the best drivers in NASCAR coming there out of uh, possibly because of uh, limited options elsewhere, right? There was nowhere else to go. Everyone else, you know, the inn was full everywhere. So it was a very uh, fortunate, lucky break for RCR to be able to get Kyle uh, and a driver of his talent. And they are now both working toward, uh, you know, elevating that brand and that company up to an A team, like a HMS, Penske, and it's close. They've done it. Yeah. I think they've already done it. I mean, like, they, I, they, they have, they, w- there was skepticism in what, in, in where I, RCR was, and all of a sudden that skepticism one, is gone. I don't fall for that. Okay. So this is the shit that bothers me. We go to the clash, and Priest runs really good, and everybody's like, oh, Priest going to have an awesome year. We talked about that on this show. Mm-hmm. Kyle goes and wins that race. The eight car ran good there. They run to both stages there. It's a fast race car at that racetrack, and you put one of the best drivers in it, and it wins the race. It shouldn't be a shock. It shouldn't be a surprise, but I need a bigger sample okay, size. Okay, fair. I need several I more. You. Let's go to some more racetracks. Let's let's be patient about just what we think they can accomplish. I won't be shocked if they win six races, but if they only win two or three, I won't be shocked either. Um, it's not easy to run to win and be successful in this series, and um, but they're certainly, you know, I don't, I wouldn't say they're at Penske, uh, you know, Hendrick level yet in terms of just a brand and a, and a company and organization, but they are rising fast. Yeah. And so if, if Kyle can go out there and keep it up, top fives, wins, uh, you know, assert himself as a championship favorite a month, two months into the season, then certainly they, they are, uh, they're not the RCR of old. Uh, that's another, that's the same thing with Kyle. I think that, um, you know, I need, you know, I, everybody is positive on Kyle right now. And I, I, I am too. I th- I think you know this might. I wonder if his situation at Gibbs was just so miserable, and that was what made him an insufferable human being. Is that just his situation was that frustrating for him uh, that he could not help but let that sort of shine in a lot of things that went on in, in his world, right? We got that we would we would be exposed to it. Now in this new environment, a completely different culture, is he? Less stressed out, is he? Does he feel surrounded by all the things that he really needs and wants? And is this sort of, you know, is this? Is it? Are we going to see a new version of Kyle Busch? I hope so. And and I, but again, I need like let's get down the road of several more weeks, see some, you know, see how it goes. The ups and downs of NASCAR uh, will expose everybody. And you know, you've seen the worst in me in moments, and so. I feel like that you know my I'm gonna be a little patient on 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 you know what the, what I think their potential is this year, but out of the gate it's phenomenal. 